People and they talk. I ask you, I said, What's going on in your life? It's just stuff. Josh and I were talking this morning, just got stuff going on. And just kind of, what do we need to do about it? I mean, just just pray about it. But there's just stuff kind of going in and out of here. How do I handle that? You know, Book of James, it talks about you need to consider joy. And these are my words that you're going through these temptations and trials, but you think, How do I do that? I mean, you don't understand what I'm going through. How do I go through these things? How do I consider joy? Well, yeah, I know what you're going through. Because I'm going through some of the same stuff. But the Bible talks about how as Christians, we're supposed to pick up our cross and daily carry our cross and follow Jesus Christ. And if we're supposed to carry our cross every day, we're supposed to be like him. And he went through all kinds of persecutions. But the joy to it is that as we follow him, we have eternity in heaven with him. That's joyful. That's unbelievable joy to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's going to be some persecution. But Joe, you, you don't understand still what I go through. Have you gone through any more where you had the lashes with the cat and nine tails? Have you gone anything anymore where you had to stand, where you were hung on a cross, where your hands and feet were nailed, and you were ridiculed? Are you going through that much stuff? No, I don't think so. Well, then consider it joy, because it's just temporary. The Bible talks about everything here is just temporal. It's just temporary. These are just bodies that we go through on earth with. And everything else is a spirit that we have. It won't be long. And I'll remind you, Jesus is coming back. Do you know him? Do you know him in your heart? And I'm not talking about just going to sit in the pews in church and saying, I show up every morning at 11 o'clock. I'm talking about in your heart as you received him as your Lord and Savior. And are you a true follower of Jesus? Not just a fan. Not somebody who just buys a ticket and goes sits in the pews. I'm talking about somebody who's given their life to follow Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's going to be things that happen to us in our lives. But consider it joy that we are true followers of Jesus Christ. And do pick up your cross and follow Him daily. Not on just Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays or on Sundays. But 24-7. He is our Lord and He's worth following. Look at what he did for us. Didn't even know you. Didn't even know Lewis or Jake. Well, he may know Jake. But something to think about. 
Let me get out of the way. Irma Morales wants to speak today, and I'm not going to stand in her way. Here she goes. Well, he's kind of already preached my message. <laughs> <laughs> so I made it real easy. Now, I want us to go to... Philippians chapter 3. And I'm going to begin with verse 7. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. It says, But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having the righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. You know, when I first came to the Lord, one of the things that I did was I wanted more, more and more and more. I wanted to know him more. The one that has now, has now interrupted my life as I knew it so radically. He turned it around fast. He did a quick work in me because he, I guess he knew me that well. And I, and I just wanted to set out to know everything that I could about this Jesus that I grew up in church. We grew up in church in Sunday school, and sitting in the pews. As a youth, we just looked forward, but we were really thinking about everything else but what the preacher was preaching. And so as I sat out on my own, really thinking, you know, I've got this. I'm going to take life on my own hands, and I'm going to go on from here. Thank you, Jesus. And so I want you to know that for 18 years, my life was up and down, just up and down by wrong choices and, and just a destructive path. But when I came again to the Lord and I was transformed so radically, I could not get enough of this word. I, I just had to know him. And one of the things that absolutely amazed me the more was, was just reading in the Old Testament about the parting of the Red Sea about lion, uh, the lions, the mouth that he shut of the lions when Daniel was in there. The way that they put Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego in that fiery furnace and how they turned it up seven times higher than normal and how they came out of there absolutely not a, a not the smell of smoke, not one hair cinched. It was just amazing how he did this, how that manna fell down from heaven. It just amazed me, and I wanted more. And I would sit and pause, and I would ponder, and I would just sit there and thought, oh, how I would have loved to have been born then, to see that Red Sea part, or even to hear about how Daniel came out and the lions didn't devour, how I would have, because I thought, see, that he was so mighty then. I thought he was so powerful here in, in these back pages at the beginning of the Bible and, and, and at how at the beginning how all this stuff was created and how awesome it might have been and how now I just had to kind of picture him and how I had to kind of by faith because the word of God says the just shall live by faith. We shall walk by faith and not by sight. And I thought well you know maybe if, if I would have been born back then or even when Jesus was walking the shores of Galilee, maybe it would have been easy for me to picture, to, to walk in this truth. But the more that I began to read and the more that I just had to have more. Now, when I'm telling you more, I was overboard. I would stay up to one, two, three in the morning. Just absolutely couldn't get enough. And I would go to bed and the first thing when I would sit up in the morning would be, okay, turn on some music, you know, turn on the TV to gospel. I, I couldn't get enough. I could not get enough. This was so real to me. And what I began to see was that the power of God had never changed. That this God that had now turned my life around, this, this Jesus had done such a, uh, just set me on fire. 
And I wanted more. And I come to realize that, you know what? He was the same. The Word of God says He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And this, this one, the same Jesus, was the one that I couldn't get enough of. And I thought, wow, because I, when I would read about this manna from heaven, how, when I would read about how their shoes grew as their feet grew in the 40, day, 40 years that they wandered the wilderness, and how, you know, us women, we need shoes, I mean, every season. <laughs> You know, because they change, and, and so we, and I thought, I don't know, you know, that was an awesome miracle that 40 years they didn't get new shoes, but that as their foot grew, as the child grew, so did the shoe. I thought, wow, that would be amazing, but they murmured and complained. I thought, how could they do that? That manna fell, and they were provided for. It was healthy for them. It was, uh, it was with a purpose that that fell for them. And they murmured and complained. Well, who were these people? You know, how, I mean, and then I began to come and to read about Jesus and fall in love with Jesus, about how he took my place at that cross and I realized, wow, and I came to this passage that I just read about the Apostle Paul saying, you know what, I count everything rubbish. It means nothing to me anymore to know Christ. And then something begins to happen. All of a sudden, this is alive. The Word of God is alive. It's active. It's truth. It's the way. It's the only truth that we can live our lives by. The Word of God says that we are to fight the good fight of faith. See, it's a good fight. When you're going through something, it's a good fight of faith. Why? Why? The reason that it, we have to tweak it is because the more that we know Him, the more that you're familiar with His love, the more you know that He will not allow you to be destroyed. The more that you will know that He will not allow you to be put to shame. The more that you know that love, you're going to know, you know what, everything is going to be alright. It's going to be alright, so therefore it's a good fight of faith. It's you saying, I'm going to remain because the one that loves me will cause me to remain. Yes, my knees want to buckle. Yes, my heart aches. Yes, I'm, I'm pulled, but I'm not destroyed. I am standing, and I will remain because I know him. I know this one. See, the Jesus that we're talking about today, he's not a has-been. He's not someone that did mighty things back then. He is still mighty to save. He is still, he says, everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is a rescuing that he does when, he, when you call upon him. When you say, you know, and the more you call upon him, instead of trying to take things into your own hands, the more we say, you know what? That's not going to pull me anymore. It's not going to have that kind of, of control over any, me anymore. So I'm going to lose that. But I count it all rubbish because I know Christ. And if I know Christ, I'm going to be all right. And see, he loves you. Not temporarily, but with an everlasting love. That love, when you get that, because when you think about you read in the Old Testament and, and you talk, you know, you just sit there and you say, Lord, how is it that these miracles, signs, and wonders would happen, yet the people would, after that miracle blew over, they would just go on. Well, we're the same. But he is patient and he is faithful. And I don't know about you, but has he been patient with you? <laughs> He has with me, very patient. But you know, he's faithful, and he's able to finish that, what he has begun in your life. It has really, you know, all you gotta do is be available to him. That's all you have to do. That's it. I was available that one day, and he said, I gotta take her, and I gotta transform her quick, because I'm able. He called those things that are not as though they were. And before I was walking how I am now, he knew I was called for great things, great and mighty things. There's a calling on my life that I didn't know I had. And I only was able to find it through Jesus Christ. That passion to, to minister, that passion for the word, the hunger. If we love him, we love his word. We can't get enough. It's food 
It's food that we need. And so when he's talking these crazy things, the Apostle Paul, I mean, he went through being shipwrecked, uh, being counted as an imposter, as a no one, as, a, you know, just persecution, the, the rejection, being hungry, so many things. And he got up and kept on going, got up and kept on going. They would tell them not to preach anymore. In what name? In the name of Jesus. Don't use that name. You know what? You should use it. Why? Because it's powerful. If they told them don't use that name anymore, there's something behind that. Hello? We need to call upon the name of Jesus more often. We need to use that name. When there is power in the name of Jesus, he will be more real to you than anything that you see, than any circumstance that you can be up against. He's real. He's alive. He's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. He'll wait you out and sit there and say, oh, I've got patience. I've got patience for this one. I want to tell you that Jesus is real. He hasn't changed. He hasn't lost any power. He hasn't quit doing miracle signs and wonders. He is the same. He will take your life and he will transform it. He will change everything about you and you will come to know who it is that you were created to be. You'll never know why you even exist, why you even are alive without him. He brings purpose. He comes and all of a sudden you can see clearly now. Why? Because you have Jesus. He is the light. You know where you're going and where you're supposed to be because he is the way. And you know that, you know what, everything else was a lie because he is truth. And all of a sudden you begin to walk in that. And you begin to say, you know what, I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Not, I can do this on my own, but through Christ Jesus. There's a power that is in you that's in the same power that was in Jesus. It's the same thing. Nothing has changed. He's called you to walk in great things. The storms that come, like he said, they're temporary. They're temporary. And sometimes we want to throw in the towel. I want to say to you that I know there, there's this person that is listening to me. And you are a man. And you have had either a heart attack or you've had, there's some issues with your heart. And you are the one that the whole family gathers around. They come to you and you find yourself that you are not the same. You're not able to hold it together. You're, you get up in the morning, you don't have the strength that you used to have. And there's something happening. You don't, you don't recognize yourself anymore in the physical because you used to get up and go. They would call and you would, they knew that you would come to their rescue. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And that same power, he will raise you up in strength again to be able to keep on keeping on with your children around you at the table. I'm here to tell you that this Jesus and what you're going through, it is temporary. It is temporary because he has the power that you need to turn your life around. He, there is power in the name of Jesus. And I say to you, you, you gentlemen, that you don't find that you have the same strength. And your health is it's just overpowering you. And you see and you think, what am I going to do? What is my family going to do with? I'm here to tell you that Jesus is awesome. He's not having me say this because he wants you to hear it. He's having me say this because he wants to invade your area right now, your environment, and tell you, count everything as rubbish just to come to know me more intimately because I want all of you. See, you, he says that you are his exclusively and he is about everything about you. He wants you to enjoy everything he's given you, but he says to you, I am the Lord your God that knows what is best for you. And he's going to raise you up, mighty man of God. He raises you up this day. Strength is going to begin to come to your body. And you're going to find that you're going to get up and be able to do the things that you were able to do again. So rise and believe. Give the Lord a chance. He is mighty. He's good. But this like he said, don't get up and go to church. Don't get up and read your Bible because it's what we do on Sundays or what we do at Bible study. It's alive. This is real. 
These are life-changing words in here, and it can transform your life. What do you need him to do for you? What do you need him to do? What do you need? Because he can do it. You have a void in your life, he can fill it. Oh, but my void is big. You have no idea what's happened to me, what they did to me. I have suffered, but you know what? He's big enough. He's got all by himself, and if you'll just let go and let him, he'll transform you. For someone to talk like this and say, I count it all rubbish, it's all, I've lost it all for the sake of Jesus Christ, it's because this man knew the love of Jesus Christ. And when you know the love of Jesus Christ, you are more than a conqueror. You rise up again, no matter what they've done, no matter what they're saying about you, no matter what storm you're facing, you get up again because you say, there's one that loves me and he's gonna see me through. There's one that's begun a good work in me and he's able to finish it. There's one that loves me with an everlasting love and he is patient and he's good and that's all he knows how to do is to be good to me. And then you'll find yourself saying, you know what? That used to upset me. It doesn't upset you anymore. Why? Because you've come to know more of the love of Jesus Christ. And the love of Jesus Christ, it'll, faith works by love. You trust him. All of a sudden, you can fight the good fight of faith because you know what? He's got you covered. He's got your family. He's got your health. He has your finances. He has your future. He has your now. And he had you back then. He's the same. I don't know what else to say to you, but without the love of Jesus Christ, without the love of Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter that someone said, well, he died on the cross. Do you want forgiveness for your sins? Pray this prayer. If you stop there, if you stop there, then you will go on and struggle. You will go on and say, who is this Jesus? Supposedly he loved me so much, he died for me. By Why am I going through these things? You have to know him. This was never given to us that we would just take it and apply it without him. It is him. <laughs> Hello, it is him. And when you read this, this is him. And you take on him. And you say, I trust that you love me, but Lord, I want to feel that love. I want to feel your love and arms around me. And there are people that they're depressed, they're lonely, because they've not known the love of Christ. And they're hanging on, and they're hanging on. But the Lord says, hang on, because I am coming. I love you. There's nothing that you can do to have me love you less. I've already loved you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And there isn't anything that you can do about it. Nothing. He's convinced that he can turn your life and that you can go out and do great exploits. You can go out and do great things. You can have words come out of your mouth that will transform people's lives, rescue them, never to be the same again. Do you want that? Yes. Say yes. Say yes to the Lord today. Say, Lord, I want that. I want to know the power of the love. I want to know what was behind that the Apostle Paul would say this. It's not that I, what if I would have just lived when he was parting the reds? You know, he's the same. He's the same. He hasn't changed. All we're called to do is to fight the good fight of faith, and it's not a bad one. Change your perspective. Set your eyes back on Jesus Christ and not your situation. Say, Lord, I don't, I'm not going to look down anymore. I'm not going to look at the checking account. I'm not going to look at the police report. I'm not going to look at, the, at the, the, the doctor's report. I'm not going to look at the storm anymore. But I'm going to set my eyes on my Savior, my Redeemer, my hiding place, the one that is the truth, the only one that's going to stick by me closer than anyone else that knows all my secrets and hasn't told them to anyone else. That's the one I want. That's the one I want. He knows everything about you. Because people know stuff about you, but they only know the half of it, right? <laughs> they only know the half of it. But the Lord, he knows it all, and he still wants you. He still says yes to you. Say yes to him. 
Say yes to him today. Say, Lord, I know that the doctors say this, this, and this, but I know you can do something. I want my health back. I want my family back. I want to be, again, my finances, free. I want, I want it back, Lord, because I know that I can have it through you. And Lord, and I will serve you. I will serve you. I want to be crazy about you. And yes, it is possible to not be able to get enough of him. To rise up again the next morning and your eyes are straight again fixed on him. That you go on and have to do what you have to do, but any second you have, you're in the car and you're just singing. You're going somewhere and you're humming. And it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. He's so awesome and he is so great. I say to you, get to know him. The love of Jesus Christ. He's the same. You don't have to wish that you'd have been born back in the Old Testament. You're born now. He's real now. He's mighty now. He's powerful now. Won't you... Say yes to Jesus. God bless you. to after hearing that wonderful message, please join me in this prayer. Oh, Savior Jesus, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for dying for me on the cross. And I confess my sins to you, and I know that I'm a sinner and don't deserve grace, but I accept you into my heart and accept your gift of grace. And I pray that you'll help me to show your love to the world and help me to just be growing in you and never being able to get enough of you, Lord God. And I just pray that I just accept you into my heart, Lord God, 
and pray that you'll always be with me as I know that you will. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you guys. Like I said, if you need to review that wonderful message it's on mensbibleclass.com on your Facebook, on your webpage. And that's it, listen today. Amen. Amen.